Intraarticular fractures of the distal tibia, or so-called pilon fractures, are still one of the major challenges in fracture surgery. Because of the importance of the soft tissue cover, we will be working on a foamed model which contains this pilon fracture. A radiograph of the plastic bone shows a simple oblique fracture of the fibula. Next, the lateral key fragment of the distal tibia, which is normally connected to the fibula by the anterior syndesmotic ligament. There's also a posterior lip fragment, indicating a fracture in the frontal plane. The anterior lip is impacted with considerable displacement. Finally, we have a large medial fragment, including the medial malleolus. The four operative steps are First, reconstruction of the fibula. Second, alignment and preliminary fixation of the articular surface of the tibia. Third, buttress of the distal tibia with plates and or screws. And finally, cancellous bone autograft. Let us start with the first step, the reconstruction of the fibula. To do so, we need to carefully plan the incision for the tibial approach first, as a bridge of intact skin of about six centimeters has to be preserved between the two incisions. This brings our straight incision for the fibula to its posterior edge. The foam does not cut easily. You will notice that you also need to cut through a periosteum-like sheath to get to the bone. To facilitate exposure, wound spreaders have been added to the instruments. If some foam has penetrated into the fracture gap, it must be removed, just as we would clear the fracture gap from hematoma and debris. The shortened oblique fibula fracture is gently reduced with the small tooth reduction forceps. A slightly contoured five-hole, one-third tubular plate is placed onto the lateral aspect of the fibula so that the middle hole can accept an interfragmentary lag screw. Drilling with a 2.5 millimeter drill bit and the corresponding drill sleeve. Measuring of the depth. Tapping with the 3.5 millimeter cortical bone tap. A 3.5 millimeter cortex screw is driven home. A second screw is placed distally to the oblique fracture. After removal of the reduction forceps, the already planned interfragmentary lag screw is placed. First, a 2.5 millimeter hole is drilled through both cortices. The near cortex is then over drilled to a 3.5 millimeter gliding hole. Measuring the depth and tapping the threaded hole with a 3.5 millimeter tap. Insertion of the lag screw, producing interfragmentary compression. The remaining two screws are regular cortex screws. This terminates the reconstruction of the fibula. Second step, alignment and preliminary fixation of the articular surface of the tibia. 
we approach the distal tibia through a straight incision starting laterally to the tibial crest. As we reach the level of the ankle joint, we gently curve in the direction of the medial malleolus so that our exposure permits a good look into the articulation. The fracture fragments are identified and cleared of hematoma. In order to get a better overview posteriorly, the loose anterior lip fragment is temporarily removed. We start the reconstruction by reducing the large medial fragment with a pointed reduction forceps or Weber clamp. A 1.6 mm K wire holds the fragments in place. The anterior fragment is put back into place. And again the reduction forceps is used to hold the anterolateral key fragment. While the second K wire is placed through a stab incision over the tubercule de chapeau. A third K wire secures the anatomically reduced articular fragments in a transverse direction. It is now essential to check the adequacy of the reduction on x-rays or fluoroscopy in two planes. The final two steps of the operation concern the buttressing of the distal tibia with a medially placed plate and or screws and the filling of the metaphysial defect with autologous bone graft. We choose a cloverleaf plate which will be placed medially. As the K-wire appears to be in the way, it is replaced by a new one more posteriorly. The slightly contoured cloverleaf plate now fits snugly to the bone. First, the oval hole is used and we drill with the 2.5 millimeter drill bit. Measuring with the depth gauge. Tapping with the 3.5 millimeter tap. And placement of a 3.5 millimeter cortex screw. The metaphysial defect is now filled, preferably with autologous cancellous bone, which should provide some mechanical support. Transverse compression of the articular fragments is obtained by placing a small cancellous screw distally through the three major anterior fragments. We drill with the 2.5 millimeter drill bit, measure the depth, and tap with the 4 millimeter cancellous tap. We can now insert the 4 millimeter cancellous screw. Good compression is obtained. To secure the fragments in the frontal plane, a cancellous screw with washer is inserted in the AP direction.
Finally, the plate is fixed to the shaft by three 3.5 mm cortical screws. Once all screws have been tightened, the K wires are removed. Another X-ray control should be made. The wound is irrigated and finally closed with a very gentle suture technique. Here, a closer look at our model without foam cover. This is how your fracture reduction should look. Especially inspect the reduction of the ankle joint. This is the final x-ray in AP and lateral direction.